This just in is the Mi 8 SE. So I've already taken a look at and unboxed and done my detailed first hands-on with the Mi 8. But this one is the cheaper model of them. And to me, it is the most interesting model because in China, this retails for around about 300 US. Our retailers are selling this for about 350, so it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but do expect the price to eventually drop down on that one here. So it's a cut down version. It has the notch, of course, still. It's a Samsung AMOLED panel with a resolution of 2244 by 1080p. Well, it's full HD plus there. It should look good, should have deep blacks on here. Battery capacity slightly reduced as well, so it's down, it's only a 3150 milliamp hours. The other thing is we've got on the front, 20 megapixel front facing camera, 12 on the rear with an f1.9 aperture, and a secondary five megapixel camera. I believe it's the same camera setup as the Chinese version of the Redmi Note 5, otherwise known as the Redmi Note 5 Pro or the Redmi Note 5 AI. Type-C on here, dual nano SIM, it is missing 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and micro SD card support, but that is of course to be expected. And the first mobile to ship with the Snapdragon 710. So this box is factory sealed, so it will have only the Chinese and English ROM on here. It will not have Google Play, I have to install that myself. All right, so we have some writing there in Chinese that I do not understand. I don't read Chinese. There is the phone there, of course. So we have a typical Xiaomi cable here. This is the Type-C cable, so it's that white and gray. And then we have the power supply. This is a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 spec charger. So maximum output is 12 volts, 1.5 amps. So in this little box on the top here, what we have is just an instruction thing here, quick guide just about the phone, some sort of warranty card there. Now this is all in Chinese because it is the Chinese version. And they have included there our Type-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter, then a SIM tray tool there, and a TPU cheapy kind of case here. So it's not wonderful quality, but uh, it does the job exactly like the same one that we have with the Mi 8. So it's gonna protect the buttons on there, you've got the opening there, of course, for the rear fingerprint reader and all the cutouts. So it's a perfect fit for the phone. This is what it looks like in the case. Now, I have noticed that where the camera bulges, that the case is actually going to sit perfectly flush with that. So there's still a risk of you scratching the lens on the back there. And it does fit around it nice. It gives it a lot of grip there to the phone. So this transit screen protector is just mentioning the specs there very briefly. So the Snapdragon 710, the cameras and the 20 megapixel front facing AI camera. The Mi 8 SE weighs 164 grams and is 7.7 .7 millimeters thin. That's without the camera. So with the camera then that increases to 8.6 or 8.7 millimeters. Looking at the back here first, we've got glass. It has this mirror-like finish to it and it does feel really nice in hand. But of course having this glass is gonna make it a little bit more fragile. So if you drop it, it's gonna crack. The fingerprint reader there on the rear and then the camera module has a dual tone LED flash. You can see the top sensor is the five megapixel one. The one below is the Samsung, I believe, but I will check out the exact sensor info of these cameras. I think it's the same setup as the Redmi Note 5 here, the Chinese version. You can see there's a difference there with the glass, the way they have done the glass, that has changed slightly. So it's just a little bit smaller and it doesn't stick out quite so much. The corners of the glass they are 2.5D, so they're rounded off. It just has a nicer finish to it and feel. Now the buttons on the side, we've got a little bit of a texture on the power button, which I do like, so it feels a little bit different from the volume, not that you would actually mistake them here on the right of the phone. And they're made out of metal, so that's good. And the way they've finished this off around the edges there. So the finish and the build is looking really good for a Xiaomi phone. This is typical of them, really. On the top, the two antenna lines, they're quite discreet. You don't really see them. Great to see an IR transmitter that they've brought this back because that's not on the Mi 8. It's good to have it on here. And then the secondary mic there. Now, I hope that these mics or the audio quality is not going to be as poor as the Mi 8 because the audio currently on that model is quite bad. Then along the bottom, we have these two grills here for a symmetric look. So one's the mic, one's the loudspeaker. And we don't have dual loudspeakers on this model because of the small, tiny earpiece. It's, a, it's one of the things that the Mi 8 is also lacking. Type-C port there as well, and then two other antenna lines. So looking at the screen here with the notch, of course, it is quite wide. 
Uh, not quite as wide as the Mi 8. I'll give you a look at them side by side in one minute here. So you can see the top bezel is still reasonably large. I mean, it's not bad. They have slimmed down on that a little. So we've got a 20 megapixel front facing camera, the small little earpiece there, and I believe a front facing flash, or it is perhaps the IR transmitter for face unlocking the assist infrared light, but I will confirm that soon. So here alongside the Mi 8, which is of course bigger because this is the 6.21 inch screen, this is 5.88 inch screen. Uh, both have the same resolution and they both are AMOLED panels. Now as I pointed out in the Mi 8 unboxing, that one thing I've noticed, that the blacks don't look as deep on these AMOLED panels and the culprit is not Samsung's AMOLED panel. No, they make brilliant panels. The culprit, I believe, after a long time actually looking at these phones a couple of days now, that it's the glass. It seems to be just the way the glass is, perhaps the way they bonded them, the reflection on it just gives off a little bit of a, a gray look to it and not as deep as, say, for example, a Samsung or the OnePlus 6 or the OnePlus 5T. When those phones are powered off, they look all, all kind of black, don't they? But not the case here. So the bottom bezel is quite slim. This is good here. I mean, it's not the slimmest you will find, but it is slimmer than the Mi 8. And you'll see the build here got that chamfered edge that gives it that sort of shininess to it. So you've got that a long little bit of silver strips and, and shine you can see around to it. Overall, the build quality of this phone is, is really quite good. And I do like the look of it. I like the look of it more, I believe. I think, yeah, it actually does look better than the Mi 8. Probably because it does have the more squarish look to me. And it doesn't have, well, it's still got the rounded corners on the screen, but they're just not as round. I wanted to show you the SIM tray here. We know it's dual nano SIM, but there is no gasket around it, no rubber gasket, so that's not gonna stop water or dusting and, and stuff getting in there too. Now, just to point out the edge here, so where the unibody metal base meets up with the screen, this is plastic, then the glass. Now, that is actually the same case also with the Mi 8 too. That has a, like a frame that it clips or pushes into made out of plastic. It should still be very strong though, but I don't actually see any physical screws. There are no screws, torque screws, screwing the case into the front. Super quick size comparison here. So that is the Mi 8 SE, 5.88 inches. This is the Mi Mix 2S, 5.99 inches. Then we have the Mi 8 with its 6.21. And then finally the OnePlus 6. Now this one is 6.28 inches, if that's correct. But in hand, the Mi 8 SE does feel better because it's slightly smaller. And as I mentioned, I think it looks a little bit better. So let's power it up now here for the first time. Battery should have some juice in it. Need to hold it down longer. My fault. Okay, haptic feedback. It is powering up. Okay, so I won't go through the whole setup. Just to point out that Mi UI 9 is what it is shipping with currently at the time of this video. Later on, it will, of course, be Mi UI 10. And this is the Asian Chinese ROM. So it's only got English and Asian languages. Well, this is a good time to have a look at those bezels because I've got a white screen on here at the moment and you can see, okay, top and bottom bezels, they are slimmer than say, for example, the Redmi Note 5, which I have here, you can see. So they've slimmed down, but the side bezels, they're actually wider than the Redmi Note 5. So it's, okay, one step forward, uh, you could say two steps back maybe with the notch and then the side bezels being wider there. All right, so here we are in the UI. Now I've gone with the full screen gestures because I just personally prefer this because I find that with the on-screen navigation buttons that I often keep hitting the on-screen buttons when I'm using the keyboard. That's just me. So here we have, you can see a few little bloatware apps and things. So Microsoft's now even teamed up with Xiaomi to put all their crap on there. That's been on there for actually some time. Uh, more apps, you'll find a lot of Chinese stuff in here. The good thing is that all of this, literally all of it, a good 95%, you can just simply uninstall remove or disable. So if you haven't used MIUI before, it's a custom skin. This is Android 8.1 and it is running. I will check out the security level in just a second. Just want to point out, a lot of people would probably know this, that, okay, we've got updates as well, I can just see too, that you can't run this uh, UI in uh, landscape mode. So it only wants to work in portrait. But I'm doing this now just to show you that, look at these bezels. Uh, it To me, it's a, it's a little bit bothersome. That's probably my first complaint so far, first impressions, is that those bezels on the side, they're just a little bit thicker than I would like them to be. So here we go. So MIUI 9.5 stable. I've just got an update that's coming through now that I'm going to download. Android version 8.1, as I just mentioned. Security patch level, May the 1st. That's good. RAM, four gigabytes. Now, a lot of you do ask me, how do you look at the camera sensor information? So you go into my device and you can see all the specs of the device here, obviously, then you click on all specs. Then you need to just keep tapping the kernel version. 
So you keep doing that, and that'll bring you into what's called the CIT menu. Then simply hit one, check version info right here. So there we go, there's the sensor information. So it is using the same main camera sensor, but we don't have the optical image stabilization. This is the Sony IMX363 you can see. The auxiliary camera, that's that Samsung 5 megapixel one, and then another Samsung 20 megapixel front facing camera. So we need to get Play Store installed on here. To do so, go into the Mi App Store, search Google, first app that shows up, this one right here. That's what you need to install. Open it, run through it, it will install Google Apps for you. Now we'll have a look at the screen white. So this is where the AMOLED panel here is shining. Not only just with the whites, so this is more of a neutral white, it looks a much more correct white to me. A very bluish white on the Redmi Note 5 with the IPS panel. That's a trait of IPS panels, that often happens. And the good thing about the two is the viewing angles, even though I've got this set at a higher brightness, the viewing angles on the Mi 8S are much better, way better. Huge difference there. So it is, in terms of screen quality already, I can see a big step up from the likes of the Redmi Note 5 series. So you do have this with the app here under contrast and colors. This is in the display settings, and you can see that you can change their automatic contrast. I don't normally go with that, so you can set it to a standard, looks the best, you can boost the contrast, or you can set it to whatever you want. If you like a cool white, you like a warm white, it's all there, you can adjust it to your own personal preference. And quickly go through some images here. So in these lighting conditions, with just the studio lights on, not sunlight, blacks look deep, they look good, colors good, so a very nice panel that they have gone with Xiaomi in the Mi 8. Yes, here you can see dark colors look good. Now, if you happen to have really bright lights on, and it just depends on the angle, really, when you start to look at it, you'll see now uh, it's not bad. Uh, the Mi 8 is exhibiting the same thing. It's something to do with the glass that will sometimes make the blacks look like what they look like now, like this. Even when you look at it full on, depending on the lighting conditions, this is just a very minor nitpicking complaint. So I can see Xiaomi needs to patch a few things when it comes to the notch implementation. Okay, like I pointed out with the Mi 8, you can't see the battery percent. You have to swipe down for that. That's slightly annoying. A very minor annoyance, but you shouldn't have to do that, I feel. Hopefully they will change that and put a battery percent in the icon. This is all fixable, but because the notch is so wide, you can't see notifications. Unlike the OnePlus 6, for example, they will show up here. They don't here, and you can see that that's not lining up correctly with the uh, notch. Under the setting, full screen display, you've got this right here hide screen notch. You do that, and then it turns it all black, and the top of the phone, the top bezel, then looks a lot like the Redmi Note 5s. So because this is my first Snapdragon 710, I wanted to have a look at the details here of the core architecture. So we've got the Cryo 385 Silvers, six of them clocked at 1.7 gigahertz, and then two of the Cryo 385 Golds clocked at 2.2 maximum boost. The manufacturing process there is 10 nanometers. Triple check, just like all the Xiaomi mobiles, does not support seamless updates. We've only got access to slot A or partition A, and we need both of them, of course. No changes here either, so the DRM info reports that we're on Widevine level three, so we're not gonna be able to get HD Netflix streaming, for example. Now, GPS is looking really good. Accuracy is between three to four to five meters, not the 16 to eight that I get on the dual frequency GPS that's on the Mi 8. There's something wrong with that one. It's buggy, but at least we don't have that same bug and issue here with the Mi 8 SE. Of course, I did run Antutu, and here is the score for the Snapdragon 710. So it gets 167,000, that's not bad. And that places it, of course, slower than a Snapdragon 845. We expected this. That one is really quick, so that is uh, 270,000, the Mi 8. And then we have right here the Redmi Note 5, this is the Chinese variant, 116, that should be high, it should be about 130,000. And then on the low end of scale things right here is 67,000 points with my Mi Max 2. And I'm actually starting to see a little bit of lag on this one here on the latest global ROM update, just when sometimes you pull down notifications. So it's starting to show its age now, the Snapdragon 625. All right, loudspeaker sample time. So I have tested it and it sounds exactly the same as the Mi 8. So the speaker's just on the bottom. There is no front facing loudspeaker, unlike the Mi Mix 2S. Unfortunately, it's a slight disappointment with that, but I'll give you a sample of it now.
and to point out with the front facing camera that it's just a flash there. It does not have the infrared assist light for face unlocking and low light like the Mi 8 has. Face unlocking, it's there of course. Fingerprint unlocking, really quick. Face unlocking is super fast. Just to double confirm that it does not have the infrared light on there. And you can also see the status LED, so it's just white. It's not one of those multicolored. My first impressions of the performance, very smooth. And you notice that when you multitask and pull down notifications and things that it's not quite as fluid and as fast as say the Mi 8 with its Snapdragon 845. Now that's to be expected, but the touch response and the screen refresh rate, that's all good. Now it was a uh, Yogish or Yogi, I think that wanted to know, does it support the on-screen display like the Mi 8? Yes, as you can see, it does. Now the chip is so new that PUBG doesn't actually allow any higher than just the medium frame rate option and the lowest graphics settings. So hopefully they're gonna update that later on to support the Snapdragon 710. And you can see here that the frame rate is fine. There's no real problems or issues. I have seen a couple of little stutters here. So PUBG is going to run just fine on this mobile. So the camera app, there's nothing really special here. Okay, we've got the AI mode. Now this to me is a real gimmick. I've tested this out on the Zenfone 5 and it just boosts up colors uh, according to the scene. So it's got something like 206 auto scene detection modes or quite a few. I don't think it's that high, but really it doesn't give us anything extra. So the video encoder, you can change the codec if you want. So you can go on to the H.265 high performance one. And we also do have our high frame rate video mode. So that goes all the way up to 240 frames per second uh, with 720p only there. But you get the two, 120, sorry, and 1080p at least. Front facing camera sample now. So you can shoot up to 1080p only on this. You can see it lacks electronic image stabilization. So it does shake around all over the place. Uh, the front facing sensor is very similar to the Mi 6X and the fact that it's uh, 20 megapixels and has an f2.0 aperture. The quality is all right. You can see it is overexposing. So it's a, a problem as of recent with Xiaomi mobiles. They tend to be overexposing with the front facing cameras. They can't seem to get that exposure compensation correct hopefully that will be fixed in the future so this is a sample of 4k video we don't have any electronic image stabilization on 4k it's enabled but uh, you can clearly see that it's not actually working and using open camera makes absolutely no difference whatsoever so that is a shame hopefully they can enable that or support for electronic image stabilization because we are missing optical image stabilization even though of course it has the same sensor the Sony IMX 363 as the Mi 8 the audio performance, I feel there's definitely room for improvement. It's not really that good. It's a common problem at the moment with Xiaomi phones. Uh, the focus seems to be working perfectly fine. No issues with that. And the image quality is sharp. It's just that stabilization. So at this point, you really do need one of those handheld gimbals.
Alright, so the video's gone on for long enough. I know this is a very long video, but it's not just a simple unboxing, as you've seen. I wanted to cover a lot of details because I know people have so many questions with new devices. So first off, there's a couple of things here that are really good about this phone. Obviously, the price, the chipset you're getting, um, 350 US at the moment. It does sell for 300 in China, so a little bit more expensive. Uh, the Snapdragon 710, it's looking promising. I have seen some slowdown in the UI, just going up to recent apps, pulling down the notifications, also resulted in a little bit of stutter. Now, that's just ROM optimization. I don't believe it's the fault of the chipset. It feels uh, very similar to older generation flagship chips. So we're missing out on the U. FS 2.1 storage with this model. We're missing out on the optical image stabilization and that's something to consider if you do want that for better low light photography, for better video performance in 4K especially because for some reason Xiaomi's blocking us out. We cannot access the gyro using third party applications like open camera I have installed but it's still shaky footage. Now open camera on the Redmi Note 5 gives us some brilliant results. We can get super steady, nice, smooth, gyro, stabilized 4K that can compete with the likes of the OnePlus 6 almost. Uh, it does actually look sharper, the 4K footage on that one there. Now I will have a camera comparison coming up between uh, the Mi 8 SE and the Mi 6X at some stage. I'm a little bit overloaded at the moment. And I'm currently working on a camera comparison between the OnePlus 6 and the Mi 8 I have in my hand at the moment. So here's the OnePlus 6. So that'll be in the channel hopefully this weekend. I need to go out uh, for my third day of taking some shots and more video samples and then finally edit all that together. So do subscribe to the channel for more up and coming videos on these phones here. I may have an, have an update on this one before the full final review of course. So keep an eye on that. And thank you so much for watching this video. Bye for now.